All right, welcome back. We are now going to be focusing on the nav section of the uh, recipe building process. So this is where you will use the same find button, but rather than building rows or columns, you'll actually use it to find the next page button on a, on a web page. And essentially what you're doing here is just telling the recipe to find this button and then click it every time you find a new page and then it will scrape. All right, so to, to do that, we'll click the find button once again. We'll hover and we'll hit shift on the next page button. And as you can see, there is once again a class suggested and it looks like it's called next. And I'd also like to point out that it is an A element, which means that there's going to be a URL here, which is good. Um, we're not extracting the URL this time, but we are gonna be using that URL to navigate to the next page. All right, so let's do confirm and we can actually test it here. So let's press test navigation. Great, so it looks like we, it took us to the second page. That means that's working. And at this point, uh, that is good. So there's nothing else we need to do here. So we can move on to the next section or the next topic of this section, which is actions. And actions are going to be um, typically used for more advanced pages. Uh, the actions are whenever you need to click on an element to reveal something. So like, let's say you have to click a, a show more button to reveal an email, or you have to click um, a display button to display like a phone number. So that is what you would use for um, the pre-scrape here. And then we have an additional one called scroll to page end. This is if you ever need to um, have the, the page scroll to the bottom. This is in case the web page is longer and it doesn't load all of it right away, um, or if there are maybe images that have something called a lazy load where it won't display the information until you've scrolled to the bottom. So that is pretty much that the purpose of that action. So it's again to scroll to the bottom of a page to allow the page to fully load. Now I want to kind of clarify this process um, does not work for infinite scroll for meaning if the page will continuously sh like add more to the bottom by clicking a show more button or by clicking a, a load more. So whenever a page um, paginates or loads more on top of it, it's each other, um, that is actually when you do infinite scroll with click. And with this process, you essentially will be, rather than finding the next page button here, you'll actually will find the, the show more button and then you'll have that selector in here, and then you'll tell data miner how many times you want it to click. So by default, it's 10, and then the wait time is three seconds. So what this means is, data miner will look for the show more button at the bottom of the page, it will click it 10 times, and then it will wait three seconds for the full page to load, and then it will do its one single scrape, where with the next page pagination, it will actually scrape after every click. Um, so you'll click to page three and scrape, click to four and scrape, and then click to five and scrape. Where with the infinite scroll, what it would do is it would click, it would do one click, two click, three click, all the way until 10 clicks once it's showing all the data, and then it would scrape. Otherwise you would get repeated data since you're just, you're still scraping the same page. Um, I know that was a lot, so hopefully um, that made sense, but if you don't quite understand it, um, feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to kind of explain it uh, via email support. Um, so now that I've gone through th the three actions, I'll quickly demonstrate how to add them. So I'm actually going to change it up and go to another page here. Cool. So this is where we can just practice some actions real quick. So what I'll do here is rather than actually having a find button for every individual action, what you'll do is actually start from the top here, click the find button, and then you'll once again hover and shift over the item you want to get a selector for. So hover and hit shift. And now as you can see, we have a class called email button. So we'll select that, press confirm. And then what we'll do is actually just copy this and then we'll paste it in where we want it. So since we're clicking a show more, or sorry, show email button, we, that will be a, a click. So what we'll do is paste that into here in the, uh, the click on element, and then you can actually test it and see how that works. Perfect, so that's working. And then all you have to do is add it. And once it's added, then you're good to go. And just for the sake of demonstrating, I'll do one more example. 
So scroll to page end. All you have to do here is just simply edit. Great, so now we have our two actions and you can actually shift them around if you wanna change the order. But I think click on element and then scroll is good. And just so this page works, um, let's review in this real quick. I think it should still work even though we changed the page. So what we'll do is actually save it. So let's just say um, test scrape one with click and you can actually just put a description. So let's say um, show email oops, and scroll. Let's say and change this to actions. Cool. So now we have our recipe and we can go ahead and save it. So at this point, we will now go ahead and just run recipe here from the middle. And actually, I should show you this. So it clicked. Here, I'll try and do that one more time. Um, so you can see it. So let's actually go to edit. Let's and go back here. All right, so I'll hide that. And let's see if I can kind of demonstrate this real quickly. So we'll do run recipe, move that out of the way. Great, so you hopefully saw that click and then it is now scrolling. And once it gets to the bottom, uh, it might give us some de some data. Uh, no, it, it will not give us any data because we actually built the recipe for the previous page. Um, so sorry if that is slightly confusing, uh, but what we can actually do is we can edit this once again, and then we will, let's just go back to our original sandbox, and we'll get rid of the actions since you just saw those, and then we can actually save this recipe once again, and what we'll do is, let's just get rid of that, and this will be just a basic scrape. And then I'll do save as. So now we have two separate recipes that we just built. And just so you can now see this run from the original view, uh, the viewer, or the data miner um, recipe viewer, I'll open up recipe or data miner once again. And as you can see, we now have our two recipes. We have test scrape one with actions and then the test scrape one without any actions. And you can also actually also see the indicators here on the right. So what we'll do is just run it. And now, as you can see, uh, now that we're on the proper page, we have the information we extracted. Um, so we have URL, the name, and then the image. Cool. So at this point, you can pretty much download it. You can either do a CSV, um, Excel file, or copy it to your clipboard. So that is pretty much it for um, this process. So we have one more section we're going to cover. Um, that is going to be the find tool and the in just advanced selectors. Um, but this is pretty much all you really need to build a recipe. I still recommend watching that last video because we will cover um, the details and the kind of the, the tricks and tips you'll need to, to tackle um, more challenging websites. So I definitely recommend watching that. But I hope this video has been helpful so far and I'll talk to you again in a, in a moment.